Hey, kitty girls, welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time. It's Sunday, July 23rd of 2023, and we're back, babies. We're here to discuss the last three episodes of All-Star Season 8. Those would be episodes 10, 11, and 12, infamously The L Word, which was the uh, makeover challenge, The uh -huh. Fame Games Extravaganza Variety Show, and The Grand Finale. So welcome to our uh, little show that we've got here. Uh -huh. My name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Let's let's do this. <laughs> let's get into it. All right. Yes. So let's jump into our first segment, shall we? Sure thing. Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. More on that later. So in our first segment here... <laughs> It's already started. Already started. Already. Well, Damn. you know, I mean, what what is what is an episode of CoLDR without a little? So yeah, there's I that. Sure do want a lot of shade. Yeah, <laughs> sure. very sunny outside. Very sunny. Mm -hmm. So much shade. Uh, so this is where we're going to talk about serves, swerves, and nerves. Our three categories here as we put the pedal to the metal. So serves are things that were positive that we very much appreciated and want to give a shout out to or a call out. Swerves are um, the bumps in the road or the potholes as you're racing around. Probably could have been avoided if you'd just done a little bit more uh, thinking on that. And then finally is nerve. And nerve could be positive or negative. I'll be very curious to, to see what what we think of in this one. So, David, uh, first up with you, what are you serving? So, um, I'm actually going to give a serve to the reading challenge. I think um, bringing the queens back, having them come back, and um, this was, I believe this happened on episode 11, the Fame Games Extravaganza variety show. Please shorten that title. Um <laughs> And uh, they just, it was, it was nice to see, have it happen, um, especially since we didn't have it in the first episode and we didn't have a lot of things in the first episode, but um, I really enjoyed having the reading be a part of it. That's such a, you know, quintessential drag race, especially all stars, you know, moment. And there were some good ones. There were some good zingers. I really did like them. I really did like it. I forgot who won that as I look at this. Um, boop, 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 boop. Oh, Kasha. Mrs. Kasha David, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yeah. It's, because it's, it's also very humorous to me that Mrs. Kasha Davids, who has always been one of, like, especially in recent years, has been, like, kindness and support and love and all that shit, and she's like, I will dig, I will read and cut you like nobody else's business. But, you know, we know it's all in love, because that's the whole point right. of reading. Yeah, it, well. it's it's meant to be fun. Like when right. you're when you're reading, you are poking fun at, but it's all in like in a loving fashion or way, so to speak. Agreed. Yeah, interesting. No, I agree. I I, I thought that that was fun. Um, mm -hmm. we know that typically when there's a reading challenge, there's a break from when it's announced until they get back in the lineup, and mm -hmm. then they actually start reading each other so that they can like write up things about each other i don't know how much time that is i don't think it's very long um, right. if you are a queen of caliber you have already been thinking about this all along as you go uh -huh. and like pre-determining what you want to say about other girls so when the moment arises you can you know get your get your jokes out there so uh yeah nice i'm gonna give a serve to lala Ree's talent mm. So since she came on in her season, which I think was, what, 13, there has yeah. been this ongoing thing about the La La Ree experience. And right. the first time she brought that up, I was like, oh, girl, I don't have time for this. Like, <laughs> like I don't need another Valentina. I don't need a delusional queen who thinks they're all that and that they're, like, going to be delivering, you know, that they, that, like, they do this whole field of dreams. If I, you know, build it, they will come. Or if I, like, you know, say it, like, all of the secret, if I just keep saying this, like, this is going to manifest into a thing. Uh -huh. And here's why. Because too many queens do that. 
And mm-hmm. so I really like Lala Ree, and I don't want her doing that, like putting this out there and then like not living up to it. Fair. So then we get the variety show, and this bitch slays. Like, yeah. like hands down, probably the top talent of the entire show. Mm-hmm. And I was flabbergasted. Like, my jaw was on the floor, and I was like, okay, this bitch, like, lives up to the reputation of the statement of the saying and, like, makes me want to, like, go get – as Willa would say, she makes me go to the ATM to get money and come back and tip her. Mm. Like, and and so, and that's not to be, you know, uh, a diss against the other girls, but some things weren't very exciting. Um, like, I'm just going to call it out. Kahana? Really, girl? Like, so you're dressed like a cheerleader. I expect, like tumbles and falls and like flips and i expect a lot of things i expect you to like you know be the personification of these like infamous like competition snarky like cheerleading movie things like these mm-hmm. tropes the bring it on yeah yes yeah we got one backflip that's it I don't have a crickets sound effect. I'm sorry. I know. Like, I'm just... I, I'm just like, that's insane. Like, and like, as someone had critiqued, and I don't think it was on the show, maybe it was somewhere else. Someone had said, like, you couldn't even, like, come on in a tumble roll. Like, it was so, like, like the first thing everybody spotted was the carpet on the stage. Like, to give you leverage so that, like, you're in sneakers and you're not going to, like, have issues or get stuck or hurt yourself or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, like, you kind of really didn't do anything. And I was like, okay. So that's that was a disappointment and boring. Anyways. Um, so, it, like, when you – so I bring her up as an example because I feel like, eh, like, it was okay. Now, the weird thing is, is you kind of brought up, like, the, the variety show is usually the first episode. Like, it's one of the very first things. And they didn't do it, and they saved it to the end. And boy, does it show. Because some people probably presumed, oh, we're doing a variety show. It'll be the beginning of the season. And they didn't really necessarily take it very seriously. Unlike James Mansfield, who did a whole video and talked about the thought process that went into it and Mm. the choreography and, like, filmed themselves doing their choreography and explaining for the dancers ahead of time what they were going to be doing and how they had to like put a costume together to create the whole number and like to go with everything. And I was like, cause it showed like, if you put that much preparation into it, Mm -hmm. it's going to be entertaining as opposed Mm -hmm. to just there. I'll, I'll share my thoughts here in like 10 seconds. So, so that being said, like Lala, like <laughs> Lala was like, I know how to move. I know how to dance. And like, they did her good. Like she had great backup yeah. dancers. She got on mm-hmm. the, she got on the turntable box. I mean, like, and she, she just really brought it. And it yeah. was funny because she didn't do a whole lot of other things, like in the way of like props or gags or whatever. And right. not that you can't do that, but like, you know, if, if if you have a natural talent, then, you know, put the natural talent out on the stage. And she did. So I was really, really impressed. And so I thought that was a complete serve. Absolutely. Absolutely. So are you holding for the next segment? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure. Um, so, yeah, swerves. Uh, go ahead, David. Like, <laughs> I, I, see, I see what you wrote. Yeah. So, um... We've kind of, we we're just kind of just Gary was kind of talking about it and I just want to really like bring it up. Like to me, my swerve is for the Fame Game Challenge show. Mm. And some of the things you've said made the most sense. Number one, it wasn't first. It wasn't in the beginning. So it kind of fell very weird and out of place. Um, kind of like the reading challenge. While I give kudos to the reading challenge happening, it felt very much out of place because now we've got 
for the reading challenge, for example, we've gotten to the point where we have the top two. So, like, normally when you have the reading challenge, everyone is at the same playing field. Mm. You know, they, they're they just getting in, and here we go. And now we have this reading challenge where um, everyone, you know, everyone's been eliminated except for these two, and you know where you placed, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, it feels kind of like, again, out of place. And similar to the talent show, the main purpose of the talent show is to show your quote-unquote talent and where you've come from when you were off the show, when you were on the show to now. Just trying to mm-hmm. give an idea of what you can do. Um, a lot of diss tracks, and that, or it girl tracks, as I think um, Bussy calls them. Like, And I'm like, yeah, that's true. It's fair. It's what you can do. It's drag. Um, most of the time when you see a drag pageant, they're usually doing some form of lip sync and dance of some kind. So it makes sense. Like talent, you know, we'll occasionally get some things like we had the the bubbles from, I think, All Star 6 and, you know, random things, stripper poles, all that stuff. Like that's fair. This one felt just kind of meh, like for me. Like Kahana is a perfect example. Like while I appreciated the backflip, that was the juxt of it. Like all the other stuff you did was kind of what you would probably do if you were performing a number. It didn't give a, it didn't give me enough of a juxtaposition between your normal performance and a dislike talent performance. Um, I also agree with you 100% that it doesn't look like the queen, some of the queens took it as seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, are because they thought it was going to be the first thing, one and done kind of moment. Um, you know, I love Monica a lot, mm-hmm. but her number felt very flat to me. Um, and, yeah, I don't yeah. know what it is about Monica. Like every time she's on the stage for Drag Race, mm-hmm. she seems a little lost or confused yeah. and like. And is staring at, at things I think that she's not supposed to be. Like, she's distracted by the lights or the cameras or the crew or something, something. That she's not engaged in a fantasy of the moment being on the stage. Like, in this number, like, she's up there and she's being sexy and there's a light pole and there's dancers and there's a bench. And, like, she goes through this whole thing, but it just felt sort of uncomfortable. And I was like, yeah. I was like, wow, like, that's really disappointing. And that's why, like, I, a part of me was like, So did you, like, kind of dream this up and didn't think that much about it and wasn't that concerned? Like, you thought this was going to come early in the season and and it wouldn't be that big of a deal? Because I'm like, that's – because I'm kind of not okay. Like, not okay in comparison to what others brought. Yeah. It just – again, it felt felt off. And that's where – and I love her and I think she's amazing and I'm sure – I would love to see Monica outside of Drag Race if that makes sense. Like, I want to see her doing something where it's not affiliated with Drag Race. Like, I just want to see her actual performance. I want to see her actually on stage doing something because I feel like, like you said, like, something about being on the Drag Race stage, like, takes her out of it or something. I don't know. Um, In either case, um, I, I did, I overall just, I gave, I giving swerve to this because I feel like it was a missed opportunity and it felt very like pushed in. And the final reason, the ultimate reason for me is it delegitimized everything that they had talked about for um, the fame games. Like the whole point of the fame games was like, Mm. they were going to show their number, their looks and be promoting themselves on social media. and, And that was sort of be how the audience would vote. Like, that was the whole thing. And then here we are on, we have this Fame Games Variety Hour, and we have to, we, we now have to show our talents that more than likely everyone was told it was probably going to be first, or something happened where it was going to be, like, everyone assumed that it was going to be first thing, because it's always been the first thing. Right. And, um, and you didn't give as much thought to it, but that now became the thing that, gave you the advantage in the voting right 
Well, I, I will say this. I agree with you that it was misleading that they made the fame game seem to be all about what the queens presented as their looks during Untucked. Like, that's when they aired those segments mm -hmm. and what they did on social media. What they didn't say, which might have made it a little bit more tolerable, is to say, and there's a surprise when we get to the end of the season. Right. And then people would have, like, understood, oh, hopefully they would understand. It is America. Mm -hmm. That the variety show is the surprise element. Like, you know, that you get another opportunity to showcase who you are. Which some people did not necessarily do very well, but, um, yeah. So I don't know. It, it it was a thing. It's it's there, and I think some people were well prepared, and other people just kind of yeah. did whatever. And something to er your earlier point you were making, uh, Damon, that I thought about is like because you're talking about like national competitions, so like Entertainer of the Year, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. and those kind of things. What I realized is is like where Drag Race has a challenge or a, a problem is queens come on and i'm just gonna say it like this and i'm not trying to be disparaging or ignorant queens come on and they don't have a talent right they're a drag queen they come on they look pretty they lip sync they do moves but they don't necessarily have a talent and mm. the reason i phrase it like that is because while lip syncing can be a talent like it's a craft it takes time and you mm. kind of personify a number and um, what really the variety show has be be has become is what do you do that's different? Because all of you are, quote unquote, men in dresses with painted faces. So what's the elevation? What goes above and beyond? And and so it re I think that's where it's a bit of a struggle, because if you don't really have anything to pull on mm -hmm. and, and we've seen it in previous seasons where someone's like, oh, I took lessons and I learned to pole dance. Okay, but girl, do you pole dance regularly, like, in your number? Like, are you a Violet Tchotchke that does, like, acrobatics and or gymnastics? Kind of things, right, yeah. right, right. Like, that's different. To me, that's a talent. Mm -hmm. um, juggling, fire breathing, you know, like, like these are talents, um, you know. And I get it. Like, not every queen can, you know, deep throat on stage. They would not get past the censors. So, but <laughs> I'm just saying, like. You know, and that's where I'm like, eh, like you've got yeah. you've got to bring something else. And if you don't have any of that, then you kind of look lackluster compared to queens mm -hmm. who come and do a thing. So, like, speaking of the variety show, like the fact that Candy Muse and Jimbo did their performances and on top of hosting was an interesting choice to me because I mm -hmm. felt it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary. <laughs> like, and I'm yet, not... and yet. Jimbo like really delivered in classic Jimbo style, right? And like and, and and like put a whole thing together that was just ridiculous yeah. and stupid and funny. Like it was the it was classic Jimbo, and you know, and so uh, you know, yeah, like I, I appreciated like, Jimbo's. I, I didn't like candies, but there's no surprise. Anyways, yeah, like that. That's <laughs> that's the thing, and that's sort of where. Again, this felt, again, I feel like either they were told, which we, we know how it is, production bullshit, that, like, oh, we're doing a talent show, and this is going to be, like, the opening, you know, first thing kind of thing. Or they assumed it was going to be the first thing. So mm -hmm. everyone made something. I'm sure if we if we can talk to Heidi, she will indicate, like, what her talent was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and... Did you got there and we had this money, success, fame, glamour bullshit um, uh, moment and uh, the queens were like, oh, OK, well, fine, I guess I'll put this over here and then right. <laughs> whatever. It just, yeah, it, it, it again, this is why I gave it to Swervis because it feels like it was just like afterthought or something along those lines. Yeah, I think that's fair. Speaking of afterthoughts. Um, okay, so I have two things that are swerve for me. Uh, the first one is Jessica not connecting with Lisa. So this is in the L word. This is in episode 10. This is the makeover challenge. Mm -hmm. Infamously, when we have the makeovers, there's always this like kind of drama about a queen not connecting with their client. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just not really working out. And it was interesting to me that like Jimbo and Candy had really good connections with their with their clients, and that Jessica didn't. And I kind of felt like that was Jessica's doing. Yeah. Like, like, sense. well, we can say that production did some fuckery and like picked a timid personality mm-hmm. of a of a participant. Like, you just really seem to not be engaging in right. a way that I think would have benefited better. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and I, I I feel that I can see that it felt very off to me that we have wild vibrant jessica and lisa this quiet like very i I hate using this word but plain like jane kind of like um lesbian and it was like and again like it, it she came out of her shell little by little but i don't think it it happened in right like the way that you would think it is like in comparison and I hate comparing Candy to this, but like where Cookie, I forget her real name, is probably on my note somewhere. Uh, I want to say Abby, Abigail. I don't know. That's right. Was it Angie? Angie. Yes, yes, yes. Angie. Angie. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I can't read my own writing. Um, <laughs> um, where Angie very much came out of her shell in 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 a sense like we had this whole storyline of her being afraid of her showing this femininity like disavowing her her butchness and um candy in the, you know informing that she has a um butch you know lesbian mother mm-hmm. and like they had that really good connection and i kind of like I, I appreciate it but you had this moment where you clearly saw the evolution and um, growth of Cookie coming out of her shell and being more, right. you know, fun and 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 I do know um, just because I watch a lot of YouTube, I will own that. Um, there's Drag Race Tea with Matt. Um, they have a drag. Um, they do a lot of like um, reviews of the Roscoe's viewing party and kind of breaking stuff down and providing additional details. And he mentioned that apparently Jessica Wilde. Um, went to production and was like, I need shoes for my um, um, person because they're not working in the drag shoes or they don't have shoes that fit. That was the big thing. They didn't have shoes that fit. And she was worried that she was going to fall and hurt herself. Mm-hmm. So she demanded production get her shoes. And that's why we ended up with the, I'm assuming that's why we ended up with the weird looking boot. Um, and they even pointed it out, which I thought was, again, awkward. Like, of the things that they were pointing out in the episode, this was one of the things that they specifically pointed out. Again, I felt that was weird, but now I know why. Mm. Um, uh, and I'm not talking about the judges. I'm talking about, like, the production, like, the edits were showing, like, her giving, Jessica giving Lisa the shoes and, like, talking about them that these would be better for her on the runway kind of thing. Like that was a specific moment. I remember specifically that they distinct it out. Mm. So again, but it, it, I agree with you. I think there was this disconnect there with Jessica and her person. And could it be that Jessica's not one of the like more like Jessica's Jessica and she does, does her thing maybe, but it could also be that, there was nothing there to grab onto. Yeah. I mean, it maybe Jessica made the decision in her mind. Like I'm giving it so much effort to a point, And if I'm not getting it back from my, from my cohort, then mm-hmm. I have to move on. Like I have right. to let go and just do me and be this thing and take the hit because nothing I'm going to do is going to like improve mm-hmm. this or make it better or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, my second swerve. Uh-oh. Yeah. Mm. So I'm just going to call it out. That final runway presentation. And it is one specific queen. 
because I was flabbergasted that they decided this was going to be their final look because I thought it was bad. And it was shocking to me because listening to the voiceover and them explain it, I was like, baby, it's not a good gown. It doesn't work for you. Who sold this to you? Like, how much ganja did you smoke that you thought this was an acceptable design and concept? Candy Muse. It was bad. It was just bad. You are a round, torsoed queen with long legs. What you don't do is a high, em almost an empire waist. Like, with a, with a slit cleat up the side, with the ostrich, like, feather thing. Like, it was just... And the, the finger wave wet hair to make your head look more round. Like, it was so bad, Damon. Like, I'm watching it, and I was like, so help me this queen wins with this look. I'm done. I'm going to text Damon and say, fuck all of this. I'm not doing this show anymore because it is absolute fucking bonkers. <laughs> Who allows that to happen and say that that is the penultimate, like, the, the like the cream to, of the crop i was like no 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 and no like what is going on with you mama mama what are your notes mama i hear the paper of like <laughs> okay this isn't in my notes i don't think okay did i write it down no that's no um so Jim and I are watching this. So Jim does costuming. So, right? So right. He, he knows his shit. He knows this stuff. I had to pause the the TV, mm -hmm. the Paramount Plus, like, stream, because I had some words about this look. Mm -hmm. This was garbage. Mama, this is garbage. Yes. Okay. 100%. Okay. So, I, and I had to, like, I'm sitting here and I got mad because I was explaining this, and he kind of agreed with me. He had pointed some stuff out. Um, that, you, you are absolutely right. That high waist bullshit, no. That's, that's a no. Like, you right. shouldn't do that when you are a round girl. And you don't wear body. Like, your body is your body, and that's fair. That's whatever. But you don't have, you don't have anything that's giving this any shape right. whatsoever. Right. Um, this color does not look good on you. I, I, you said you were yellow in um, the Lucky, and maybe you did, but I thought it was more orange, but whatever. Mm -hmm. it, no, that was, you did wear yellow. It was Simone that wore orange. Anyway, but again, like it just, it, it didn't look good on you. That ostrich feather, like, bottom that just looks, it doesn't, didn't do anything at all to help the shape of this dress. Um, the bodice looked terrible. It was this weird, strappy, like, what's going on? Um, and to top it all off, I love you, Candy. You are a bit, you are a big girl and you have a big head. You need a big wig to make this all work mm -hmm. and this finger wave dark haired wig that's very close to your head this it's i it, i wouldn't call it a, a kitty cat wig but it was definitely very close um and to top it all off you put this itty bitty fascinator like in the corner here and it just felt very just it just looked it looked terrible it just looked bad and I, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. And for this to be your final look that we see you in, well, not really. We see you in the right. lip sync one. But this is meant to be your, like, all the other queens have come out. And there are some really amazing looks in that. But this to be your, mm -mm, no. This, right, right. No. Yeah, no, it was, it was bad. It was, it was so fucking bad like and i was shocked as to like and all i kept thinking was like how did this happen like did you borrow this from somebody maybe and i'm like no it's just badly made 
Like it's not well made. It it okay. And, and yeah. let's clarify. Like somebody put in time and effort for the craftsmanship, mm -hmm. and we very much appreciate that. But it is yes. just not done well enough, and it mm -hmm. is not for candy. No. Like who tells a boxy framed shouldered queen to use spaghetti straps? Why would you want to show off your wide like shoulders? Like, why are you drawing attention to that? It's like yeah. wearing the finger wave wig. Why do you want to draw attention to your round head? Like, it, like it's just strange to me that that was the that was the choice. And I feel like it was uh, inauthentic. And here's why: if you saw what Jimbo and Candy look like for the reveal of the winner live, Candy is wearing nothing like what she wore on the runway especially her final look like right. i was like what in the fuck is she wearing <laughs> but then when she takes off the big huge ridiculous like artistic whatever like <laughs> puffer coat. jacket thing yeah like and then she's just did this like i, I can't even explain what the outfit is star titty and... right with her star titties out or whatever but i was like that is more authentically candy than that yellow like swiffer thing was that she was wearing i mean Girl. Why did you say Swiffer? Girl! Because it reminds me of, like, it reminded me, okay, not a Swiffer, a duster. It reminded me well, of a yellow, dusters. right, it reminded me of a dusting, like, you know, the old-fashioned, like, feathered dusting wand or whatever, you know? Like, <laughs> but the problem is, she's not slender on top like that. Yeah. So anyways, no, it was just it was just bad. So it was a, it was a swerve and I was mm -hmm. shocked that it happened because I was like, wow, you talk a big fucking game and you like manipulated and maneuvered your way to get to the very end. You had this alliance, yada, yada, and you made it to the top two. And then that's what you presented. OK, girl. Not good enough. Not good enough, in my opinion. But obviously it doesn't matter because I'm not a judge. But, you know. <clears throat> You ready to move on? Sure. <laughs> okay. David, what 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 do you qualifies as nerve in these uh, final three episodes of, of season eight for All Stars? Um, and I said I said what a twist. And actually, we've been talking about it off and on. And it was the this is in relation specifically to the um, Fame Games moment where the to, there's a top two from this this talent show mm -hmm. and they didn't get an, a, an incentive which to me very much legitimizes like that the whole thing was we already knew who was going to win mm. like like so um as i've mentioned i watch a lot of uh youtube and i follow bussy queen um she gave a really interesting video after this that episode where um he illustrates that the voting yes. doesn't matter. Like, you can put any fucking email into this voting thing. It doesn't have to be your own. No one's verifying anything. No one's, you know, no nothing is verifying that this is a valid email address. You can just put in the email, email address and then vote 10 times. Right. Like, and it feels like that there's no real tabulation, no calculation, no nothing. It does count down how many votes you make i didn't test their theory which was if i went back in with the email address i used would i have no votes to cast which makes sense that's a possibility well that but part did could... work okay okay good i, I, I know that legitimately because i only <laughs> used one email and i voted 10 times and then i went back and and like put in i think i i it, i put in the same email i must have because then it said i had zero votes like i had no opportunity right. to vote and i was like okay like but i agree with you like what that was before i saw i think bussy's video and bussy was like you could make up a hundred fucking emails and just shove them in there and, and cast a thousand votes it means right. nothing because there's no verification that it's a real email address that you have to go click through and mm -hmm. even then you could still make a hundred emails to get mm -hmm. a thousand votes mm -hmm. if you were really that damn dedicated. Yeah. Like I, I voted, I think I voted twice. I think I used 
two separate email again and i use two separate email accounts um i've got a bunch google's a thing gmail owns me (laughs) 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 nice but um and I, di- I did vote twice. And it was just to, more for me, it was more to just like test it out, test out that you could technically vote more than once. And this was, again, before I voted on, I voted before I even saw the episode, the, the, the fame claim. Because again, in my mind, the idea was that this was supposed to be related to what they've presented oh, on the fame thing. Right. Fame, I didn't know about the fame game variety, again, hence the twist. The, the the variety show being like and you get this extra moy okay well that's that's nice um but whatever it doesn't matter again it felt like to me that none of this mattered they already knew who was going to get the crown it was just a matter of them saying it because you got to realize something and, and again this is me like going into production mode they've pre-filmed this so unless they filmed nine queens winning the the fame games crown right are filmed it nine times um we we already knew who won like well and i mean is it possible i think it's possible yeah i i think i think both things are possible i think they knew who they expected to win and I think they filmed all nine just to cover their asses. I'm waiting for any queens to confirm it. Yeah. I'm waiting for that to come about, like to be leaked on Reddit or some shit that there were nine like crowns or nine scepters handed out or whatever. Because I think that would make the most logistical sense is to just like everybody gets the same opportunity. So no one truly knows until it airs who won. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all winners, quote unquote. You just are waiting for the official announcement, and then you get the extra sixty thousand. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, but I also think they knew going into it, most likely, Jessica, James, Lala Ree were gonna be the queens that were gonna get the most votes because there was all this speculation about how like Jessica was a was a front runner because she lasted the longest Mm -hmm. and so since she was theoretically in third she was going to have that much support going into it because everybody did get to see all of her outfits plus her throughout the entire competition fair so yeah like i I, like i was kind of surprised yeah and how it played out a little bit it was it was one of the things that did bother me as well when they we were in untucked and we ran through like all the queen's looks, but we didn't see any of Jessica's because technically we, as the audience, had already seen it. Right. We don't know if the queens got to see them. Meaning, like the in that video that they showed them, did they actually show Jessica's looks? Because she was technically part of the Fame Games. Right. Yeah, I don't know. That was that was intriguing to me. And yeah. then I did appreciate when all the queens were together in the workroom that they showed them, at least we think they did, a video of all the, the previous yeah. like stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I, appreci- I appreciated that each other, that all the, all of the sisters, quote unquote, got to see each other's things right. um, before it actually aired. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so wow yeah Sorry, i'm just looking at your money thing here in the bottom sorry Don't oh me. yeah that uh we'll, we'll, we'll i'm sure we'll talk about that we'll talk about that in a minute yeah so um yeah for me i'm giving nerve to production teeing up candy as a host all season long they were making her the mic girl they were making her the one that like drove conversation um, on a lot of fronts. And the, when I wrote this, I think I wrote this because of episode 11, maybe? I can't quite remember, but... The variety? Yeah, like, there was something about, like, just the way things were going, and, and a lot of it was, like, in the workroom. Mm. And, and so I was just like, wow, they are totally making it her show. 
And I get that, like, she's good TV, quote unquote, entertainment. But I was like, really? Really? We're just going to, like, just hand it to her. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm like, I'm hearing noises. I'm like, what the hell's going on? It was just paper falling. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm like, is anybody in my home? They shouldn't be because I'm alone. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, it was, um, I don't know. It was... It was interesting. I, I, I personally wasn't a fan, yeah. but I'm sure there's a lot of the cutting room floor that we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a high probability that, like, you know, there's other things that were happening. I don't know. So, yeah, that was my nerve. Are you ready yeah. to move on? Yes, let's. Okay. <laughs> All right, kittens, it is time for snaps and eye rolls, the hits and the misses of these particular episodes. We also sometimes refer to them as the highs and the lows of what happened that stood out to us. So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? Oh, my. Um, oh, this is kind of fun. Yeah, this I need you to explain this first part. <laughs> what showing time has passed? Yes. Um the beards oh all the beards. All yes the beards. yes 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 giving us like like as the queens came in i was like who that oh wait yeah i know who it is but like there's queens with facial hair there's queens coming in with like you know stubble and what have you mostly stubble but like it gave the it gave you a like oh it's been a minute like the girls have probably been chilly. Now we know they probably don't record. It's not weekly. They're not doing it twelve weeks. Like right, that, right, we right. know that for sure. Probably as the most, maybe two or two, two, not two weeks, maybe two months, six to eight weeks. I would assume, maybe more. I don't know. But anyway, it it you had mentioned in I think the last episode you're talking about Alexis Michelle and how it looked like she had slimmed down some, and yes. that also kind of showed here. Like we we saw. Like the queen's showing time, showing time has passed. Mm -hmm. It was this moment to me, and I, I know it's a weird little thing, but it it felt good to give an authentic taste. Like these queens don't live in drag twenty four seven. This is not too Wong Fu, where they're always constantly in drag and putting on makeup and all this stuff. Like they 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 live lives outside of Drag Race, and given that they're all probably being sequestered in their hotel rooms for weeks on at a time we needed to know i feel like it's good to know that time has passed now some girls i'm sure shave regularly and all that stuff but it just it was just a good little touch for me that i liked well uh, and i will say this um i feel like if you shave regularly especially if you're in this competition and mm -hmm. then you don't have to shave yeah mama why would you like right like screw that noise like oh I, i'm not doing drag for like four or five six seven days or more like i'm i'm not i'm yep. not I'm not shaving. End some, of story. <laughs> give my face some time to breathe or whatever. Like, right, right. Absolutely. Um, I just really like that. Um, and then finally, um, this is Tasha Davis. I love you. Um, there was a, it was a throwaway line in this last episode that she was, um, it was right before the um, Ooh Girl came on. And it was, it was, she said to Nasha, she said, let's see. I wrote it down because I love this so much. Nasha, what other pot do you want to stir? Yes. Yes. Because she decided she wanted to make it known that she had thoughts mm -hmm. about James mm -hmm. and winning. And it was so funny because... Like, even some of the other girls, I think, were calling Nisha out because she was like, what did she say? No tea, no, no, tea, shade. no shade. And everybody was like, that's not how that works. Yeah. Like, no tea, no shade, but here's a bunch of shady tea. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, it's it, like, it's like, no, no. What you meant to say, I think, was all, all tea, tea, no all shade. <laughs> like, all yeah. tea, this is the truth. I'm not this shading you. 
But yeah. instead, you said no tea, no shade. And everybody, like, not everyone, but the other end of the table was all like, wait, what? Like, girl, no. Like, no. Like, that was underhanded. No. Yeah. That was cute. <laughs> I like that. I like, and it just, again, I, but, it, it, Kasha Cotter caught right, on it. Right. Kasha caught her on it. And then my favorite part was later when they're dealing with the pink furry box and James gets Nasha back. That was it i was so tickled yeah, pink. She was, it was it was like who do you find like like more most attractive or something like that it was some it yeah was what some face line, and like, what body yeah oh yeah and she was like well i'll take monica's face mm-hmm. and it's kind of between nasha and um kahana kahana's body but i do like kahana's better and that's what she was like. She was like, no Tino Shane or whatever. And I was like, and Nasha and, and Kahana were living that James yes. like like served it up like that. And I mm-hmm. thought it was hysterical. Now to be fair, I think I think Nasha lives in Chicago. Right. Um, but Kahana is part of the the RuPaul's drag race live in Vegas. In yeah. Vegas, and James moved to Vegas. So I think James and Kahana are good sisters. Right. And that was part of like the the, the situation was she was like, <laughs> Well, this bitch I know and we get along great. And you and I, not so much, girl. Like so and to be fair, I think James knew Nasha before she moved to Vegas because she used to perform in, in Chicago, Chicago every right. once in a while, having lived up in uh, Wisconsin. But yeah, no, that just that was that was that was funny. Yeah. But no, like like Kasha's quick. Yes. Like like and then she like you said earlier, she won the the reading challenge. So yeah, like I thought I thought going into it, I was like, oh, it's on, bitches. I'm like, Darian is gonna pull a Bianca, and she's just gonna like murder everyone. And uh, and and it was okay, like you know. Yeah. But yeah, Kasha, that was so funny. That was that was good. <laughs> yeah, very much uh, so. How about you? Well, I just want to give snaps to James Mansfield for the win. Like I, I have to say, I was impressed with the the variety show performance. It was quick. Right. It was on point. It told a story, and it was funny. Like yes. and she knew how to deliver on a shtick. Like mm-hmm. she was like, you know, I can't dance and I'm not necessarily that great at acting, but I've got these. Like I just thought it was so funny, <laughs> like so yeah. stupid. Yes. And like the whole like routine where she's like bouncing the like dancers like off the stage basically with yeah. her with her with her breastplate like i was just like okay that was kind of stupid like yeah. but i was like but that's what i expect from james i i never expect anything dramatic or serious yeah um, i liked it i agree i think it was a really good one it wasn't i will give that i didn't expect it but i i heard a win out of the all of them but i really did enjoy it yeah i actually marked her I might have seen her. I mean, um I and now that i think about it i want to add a, another part of uh giving snaps uh La Larie and James winning the lip sync. Mm-hmm. I, so I had a friend who was um, staying with me for a little bit and we ended up watching that episode and I nearly like jumped off the couch. I was like giving snaps in my living room when La Larie and James started interacting <laughs> And like going full lesbianic, like on the stage, because that shit's fun. Like, yeah. and it just goes to show, like the the. I see. I got goosebumps thinking about it now. It shows how in the moment you are that you're like having fun and not taking it that seriously, and you're not mm-hmm. serving cunt. Like you're mm-hmm. just yeah. being fun. Like, yeah. and so I appreciated that. Like. <laughs> That Lala Ree came over and James picked up on it really quickly. It was like, oh, okay, we're doing this. And then, like, and then they flipped, like, between, like, you know, the whole, you know, blah, 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 and their boobs. <laughs> and then, like, James falls back and puts her legs up in the air and Lala Ree climbs on top of her. And at that moment, I was like, I bet Alexis is jealous. Um, but, you know. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Oh, 
But um, no, it was it was. I just thought it was so fun. Now the only thing that I did find a little surprising is that James was not ready. And I think might have been confused a little bit that Lala Reed genuinely put her hand and her arm out to help James get up off the floor. Because mm. there was this like two second awkwardness that James like didn't have a graceful way to get up off the ground. Because mm -hmm. James isn't a dancer, so you know. Yeah. And Lala Reed like you know extended her arm. It was like you know I'll help pull you up or whatever. And yeah. I think James wasn't necessarily ready for that, and and was caught off guard because then the next couple seconds after that was a little strange. Um, mm. So then that's why when the announcement is made as to who won the lip sync, and it's James, I was like, wow, that's sort of unexpected because I didn't think she did that good. Like, <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm not being, you know. Again, you're not no tea, no shade. <laughs> No, <laughs> all tea, no shade. Like, like I'm speaking the truth. I didn't think that she did that great. Like, I think, yeah. I think she, you know, did really good. But I think Lala Ree did better. And then, yeah. and then the best part is when Mama Ru says that Lala Ree also is a winner. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I thought about it, and I was like, oh, yes, because this evens the playing field, because both of them get to spin. Mm hmm. So it's not one queen with extra advantage. Now it's two queens with the extra advantage. Now the only thing I kind of wished, and I do think it's highly subjective, the manipulation aspect of the wheel. Um, because as everyone's been kind of talking about, they're like, who the hell was behind the wheel? <laughs> like, you know, like how realistic is the wheel? Because guess what the wheel isn't? It's not clear plexiglass. It's not clear acrylic. You can't see behind it. So anyways, um, I kind of wish Lala Ree had gotten two times. Mm. Because that would have made it more competitive mm. in terms of the voting. Because right. then it would have been even that James and Lala Ree both had the same amount of multiplier going into it. Right. And I'm not saying that James would have won. I'm just saying, like, that to me would have been more legitimate. Just, like, giving it, like, a, yeah. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. So, anyways, yeah. So, but no, James Mansfield uh, for the talent win. I thought I thought it was smart. I thought it was well done. And, like, I, I think it was thought out, like, in the, this is what I need to do to, to, to get through. Um, and, and I was very pleased that, you know, James had won. I don't expect James to ever be a crowned queen. Right. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just, um, unless things change and, and I think it's a personality thing. I don't know if that would happen because oh. James's character is so kind of goofy and, and fun. Um, I don't see the, the, the person behind the persona taking things so seriously like in a pageant way that they would like really right. go go in a super serious direction or something but yeah yeah so that being said uh damon what are you giving eye rolls to i i need you to explain this because i read the words but i'm not quite sure what you're getting at so production done fucked up drag race like, okay calling it what it is it it's a call to Miss Jasmine Masters, like, you know, we fought drag race done fucked up drag. We fought production had done fucked up drag race. And this is kind of in relation, we've talked about it, you know, throughout these past like four episodes. And this season felt uber produced. Mm -hmm. Like uber produced. To the point where we had two queens essentially gonna walk away from the whole fucking thing. We have one that actually did, but we had, you know, two queens that were thinking about just walking away. This, it just felt so weird to me this season overall. And this is why I'm kind of giving eye rolls to it all because it feels very much like a what the fuck is going on here kind of feeling. It just feels very like, excuse me, why it, again, it felt like production had his hand in like everything right um and uh i follow a a um youtuber named um kayla and i probably will show a link to the video but she kind of breaks a lot of this down 
um, spoiler alert, um, this was Jimbo's season to win. And um, production made that very clear. And while we had Candy and she made it to, you know, second place, um, and we were just talking last week with Ed and how, like, we would, we would be really upset if um, Candy won. I know why we would have been upset because that's not the narrative we have been given. If that makes sense. Um, Candy has been, Candy has been the, like the talking head. Candy has mm -hmm. been, she's good TV. Candy is, is all of those, those things. But what Candy hasn't been is a title holder. Because your title holder essentially becomes your like ambassador or what have you, and that sort of means that Candy, who has been given this narrative of being a little um, cunty, um, is now your your winner. She's mm. going into Hall of Fame and all that stuff, and that feels very weird. Um, hmm. So it wouldn't have made sense, especially considering put them side by side, you know, show wise. While Jimbo isn't the greatest lip syncer, Jimbo is still was still winning all the things, um, and that's where it feels very awkward. And one of the things that Kayla mentioned that is hitting home for me is this was a really weird season casting wise. Um, we didn't, other than Candy. We didn't have, I don't think, any really top like place winners in their seasons. Um, we had Darian. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. I'm just I was there was someone else. I knew there was someone else. Yeah, I mean Darian was in fourth, Alexis fifth, Jessica sixth. This is in their original seasons. Uh right. Jimbo was fourth in Canada. Heidi was sixth. Um but you had a lot of lower placed queens. Yeah. Tenth. Uh Eleventh, ninth, twelfth, fourteen, fourteen. Yeah, like, and I do, I do know some people kind of talked about that. This was the first All Stars with so many low ranking queens, mm -hmm. and there's been talk about like whether or not to do an All Stars with the first outs, mm -hmm. um, versus an All Star with the runner ups, versus the uh, All Stars with all winner. the congenials. Like, yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, like they could they could keep going that way if they really wanted to. I don't think production can do it though because yeah. the queens aren't willing to participate. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. It, it it becomes very interesting to me. And again, like again, this has become like this overall feeling in regards to Drag Race is that it, you know it's very produced. Production has kind of made this into the reality show that it is. You know, um, forced drama, situations that would you don't think would ever really play out um, if this was reality. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of thing. And you know. We had to show, like, we had to show Jimbo stumbling in some ways to make her more relatable and endearing to the audience. We had to show, um, we had to show her being, you know, capable of getting through things and not being the powerhouse talent that she is so that we would relate to her on a personal level, that she wasn't inhuman as it were in regards to what she does um and with candy on the flip of that we had to show someone we had to have someone kind of be and this is going to sound terrible we had to have someone be the scapegoat they had to be the second place someone had to be second place um and why not for the sake of production and having someone that is controversial and gives good TV, why don't we have them kind of make their way through somehow? And we, we get that they, Jimbo and Candy, knew each other prior to this All-Star season and had met on tour and what have you, and that's great. So we had this opportunity for them to make an alliance, and that happened, and mm -hmm. we now have this moment where they made it to the end, so that's great. I think, again, I feel like um production made a mess of this season to the point where it was very just like eh. 
And I'm not faulting, and I love Jimbo, and congratulations on your win, but, and it's, you're the first international, you know, winner of the U.S. season, and that's great, but we technically just had that with um, Raja winning Canada, or, or you, was it Canada versus the world? Did she win? Raja won. Raja O'Hara? Yeah, Raja O'Hara. I don't know, because I didn't watch it, but that could be. Well, I think she was announced as that. Oh. Gosh darn it. Give me a second. There she is. Raja O'Hara. She was crowned the first ever winner of the International All-Stars spinoff Canada's Drag Race. So she was Canada versus World. So she did win Canada versus World. I knew she had won. Because hmm. that was when she came back for her lip sync assassin moment in this season. They mentioned that. Interesting. That's that's how I remembered it because I, I also didn't watch it. I just remembered that line and being like, "Oh, nice." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anywho, so I mean, I hear you on the point that you know production really kind of stepped in it in various ways. Um, I'm just gonna say this in response. I feel it was totally possible for Candy to be given the crown and it would have been a disservice because I think Jimbo is more talented. There is no that, lie there. That's that's all there is to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I did not see it as a guarantee that Jimbo was going to win. Mm. Like while we may have been fed the storyline and all this kind of stuff and I, I think the bigger point that you make that is interesting to me is that Candy does not necessarily give us the representation of the brand that would be mm -hmm. needed because she does kind of pop off and is so um, antagonizing that that could kind of tarnish things a little bit or become problematic. So I find that interesting as a concept. Uh, but yeah, that that's that. Um, so I will say this, uh, in terms of what I'm giving an eye roll for, um, Jimbo not preparing for a big girl. It really bothers me that the way it was shown was that Jimbo wasn't ready for a, a potential queen of size. Now, I'd heard rumor that Jimbo did come with extra panels uh -huh. so that the, the torso quote-unquote corset type piece of the the f like freaky kind of mouse outfit the clowny mm -hmm. thing that she really wanted amanda to wear um would have worked in a way mm -hmm. but i just don't i didn't see that and i don't know how to feel about it right of of candy and jimbo candy was prepared Candy had a baby doll dress that had, like, no shape to it, like, mm -hmm. had two of them, and it kind of showed because, uh, I forgot her name, uh, Angie, the dress didn't quite fit her well, and that was, I think, a little bit of a criticism from the judges is that, like, the dress could have fit just a little bit better mm -hmm. on Angie, and I wondered about that. I was like, how could you make that work a little bit better? Because it seems to have been, like, just pre-done, like, pre-styled, ready to go. And mm -hmm. so you really kind of took a risk in yeah. who is going to fit into it, it. Again, it could that dress could have worked on most people. Right. Um, and I don't know if you got, if one or the other was a size large, size or two larger than Candy for the sake of making it. Um, it's possible that she got two in the exact same size. Um, and knowing that Candy is, you know, not a smaller, you know, frame person, it could have potentially worked for most of the body types. But, um, like right. That, like, that dress would have swallowed Lisa, like, as an example. True. Like, the smaller girl. I don't think it would have necessarily fit Amanda. Um, I think it would have may have may have been a little snug on Amanda. Like the dress that Amanda wore fit her anyways? I, no. I'm just I'm 
back. I mean, let's be <laughs> realistic. Jimbo put her in a sparkly black dress backwards, and it still didn't necessarily work. So, anyways, yeah, I'm just saying, like, like, girl, there was a zipper up the front. It was just, it was embarrassing. Like, I just, I, I, I was like, okay, this is like, the, if there was an episode that Jimbo could lose, that was it. Because I was like, wow. Well, Luckily, the makeup and the hair worked, but the outfit not so much, and that was the critique. It, it just, it just agreed, absolutely. I, yeah, like that was, that was. That was that was a that was a choice, and I agree. I don't think I don't know. And again, like the part that bothers me the most that we don't normally see is sometimes they give them time to potentially make something. Right. Is it always successful? No, but like it it, I'm surprised that they didn't show because Jimbo can sew. Like we saw this. Like Jimbo knows I know. how to sew. So like why didn't? And again, maybe I don't. Like, th- I don't think they had the time. That was the shitty thing is that the queens came with prepared looks knowing there was a makeover challenge. And it's just unfortunate that I think Jimbo wasn't prepared mm-hmm. for a larger frame. And I just phrase it that way because that's the way it was construed. I've, like yeah. I said, I've, I've heard that Jimbo did have the ability to fit Amanda into the other outfit better. Mm-hmm. But Amanda wasn't into that. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. And that's fair. Yeah. It does take a certain look to our interest to be like, I'm going to dress like a freaky like latex mouse. Like, <laughs> like Right. Right. <laughs> but again, overall, um, I agree with you. I think it, it does bother me a little bit that Jimbo wasn't prepared. Um, and we're not saying that Jimbo wasn't. I don't think that's what we mean. I think it just wasn't. We didn't get to see that. Like, right. Again, it, if, uh, she, if if there had been like, I have this outfit for you, and we'll make it fit. Like that's what it sounded like she said. But we didn't get anything about like I can you know, corset this out or make this out to be like a you know work for anyone. I just need a little bit more time. Which right. But instead, we're gonna just pivot because she wants to be more glamour. Right. I'm like okay, girl. Yeah, I mean, anyways, that was a whole thing. But, you know, I'm sure there's more to be said about that. And there's plenty of ways for you to let us know your thoughts. Mm. You can go visit our website, CubsOutloud.com. You can leave a comment. You can also shoot us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. Or you could just leave a voicemail message. You could take that thing called a smartphone in your hand, and you could just dial 361-CA-WELL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Leave us a message. Uh, while this is the end of All Stars season eight of our like discussion of it, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't listen to your message. We just might not talk about it on the show anytime soon. <laughs> we might not air. We might not air for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a, a in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Six months ago, someone told us. Um, yeah. So and there's lots of ways also to interact with us. Um, if you go on the Telegram app and you search for COL Drag Race. Um, also, you can check out our events calendar at bit.ly backslash calendar dash col to know about when we're going to be live with our regular shows. Um, if you would like to support us, you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud. As we mentioned, I think at the beginning, either in pre show uh, or in the regular show, both of us are twinsies today. We're wearing, as Damon is showing, our consent is my foreplay drag queen pride inspired shirt. Um, that happens to have the drag pride colors and the crown, or you can support Cubs Out Loud Drag Race with like a lovely uh, teacup, you know, because, uh, well, it's technically a coffee cup, a hot beverage cup, we'll call it. Yeah, (laughs) you could could sip all the tea you want from there, Um, as well as other items that you can find at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud that's available. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for a dollar or more a month. Um, and you get uh, exclusive bonus items depending on the tier that you pick in there. You could also just give us a tip. We would gladly take a one-time donation. Go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud uh, to be supportive of us and uh, help keep the lights on, as we say. <laughs> if you would like to find us on uh, podcast, you can pretty much go anywhere that you download your podcast. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race is its own podcast feed um, for its own playlist, so you can find it there. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they find you? 
If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most favorite related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pump underscore Umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. I implore you, don't look at it at work. Please don't. Just don't. Well, just know that Damon's not responsible for you getting fired and HR having to, like, write you up. But anyways, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just say it. mm -hmm. (laughs) If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gamber73. I do have a Twitter account for as long as Twitter continues to exist. I mean, it is a flaming ball of poo right now. Um, It's uh, Gamber73Drag, where it's pretty much where I sequestered all the things that are related to the drag entertainment industry to follow on there. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. And uh, who knows when the next season will be? If if past is prologue, we'll be back. I guess the beginning of next year um, mm-hmm. when there's a new U.S. based season. Uh, but time will tell what that looks like. So uh, until then, thanks for following us, kittens, and we'll be in touch. Bye.